we're going to be looking at lab 13. This is a part of lab 13, 14, and 15. And 15 has two parts. So first, looking at lab 13, we're going to do a base. We need to design an 8-bit shift register with the flip-flops, and we're using Cordis for a log. So the first thing that we're going to do is come in here and open our Cordis Prime by Intel. Once that eventually, finally, hopefully opens up, we're going to click New Project Wizard. We're just going to click Next through this. And then through here, we're just going to find our save location for it. And we could save it in any folder. I'm just going to save it in CP6413. The title of this project is just going to be Lab13. And so that is what the top level design entity for it is going to be as well. And we'll have to stick to that. So we're going to click Next through here, Next through here. And then next through here, we're not adding anything. We're going to change our cyclone to be this 4E. And then we also need to change the name filter. Now the name filter is going to be E, P, both are uh, capital. And then we're going to have a 4 and then a C, E, 2, 2, F, 1, 7, and then C, 6. And so this is our available device that we're going to be working with here. We'll click next through here. With simulation, we want model sim. We want to make sure Verilog HDL is selected. We'll click next and then finish through this. Then we're going to go to the top left where we have the little file page looking thing. We're going to click Verilog HDL file after we click that and it's going to take us in here. Now we need to code a Verilog for this. We need, a, again, 8-bit shift register with D flip-flops. And so I've included a picture below on the right and this is what we're going to make. So we have inputs and we also have outputs. So looking at this, we can see that one input is our serial data in, right? It's going into our registers, our flip-flops and also the clock. It's going into the registers and into the flip-flops. And since it's doing this, we are going to need to make these inputs and then we'll get to that in a second though, because we'll also need outputs. First thing that we always need to do is make our module. We need our name, so it's lab 13 here. We're gonna have a parenthesis, and we need to pass in everything that we are going to um, use. So we're passing in the clock, this is just the name for a clock, and then we'll have data underscore in, and then we're also going to have all of our outputs. So we know that these are our inputs, and the outputs that we're gonna have our Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, and so I think I said Q0, but anyways, we should have eight of these starting at zero because we always initialize things at zero. And this is for an eight bit shift register. That's why we have eight things here. We have zero to seven, which gives us eight. Now we're gonna need our input. So we're gonna have input. We know our input's going to be the clock and it's also going to be the data underscore in. Now we need to deal with our output. So we want output, and then we're gonna do reg for register, and that's how we know it's a D flip-flop. And then we are going to have our Qs be inside of here. So we want our Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, and Q7 inside of this output right here. Now we need to run this always. So we will have always, and then we're running this at, and then we're gonna do the positive edge, so we want the positive edge, we're gonna do pause, or just POS for pause, and then we're gonna have edge, and then clock. So we're getting the positive edge of our clock, always always at the positive edge of our clock. And we don't need a semicolon here. After this, we're just going to go into our begin, and then we're gonna come down here, and what we want to do is we're gonna set our Q0, and we're going to use the less than equal sign, and we're going to have our data underscore in over here. And then that's, so this is going with this. And then after this, we're going to do the same thing before Q1. So we're gonna do Q1, and then we're gonna have less than or equal to, and now we're going to have our Q0. And then we are going to do the same thing until we hit our Q7. So we can just copy and paste this multiple times. We're gonna change this to Q2. This will be Q1, this will be Q2 and this will be a Q3, and we could easily, quickly, just copy and paste this, and then we actually need to change the values though. If we don't change the values, it's not gonna be a good time. 
So we need to change all of these to the proper values. So we're going to go all the way again until we hit Q7. So we're going to have a Q7 again, less than equals, and then we'll do a Q6. And after each of these, make sure you have a semicolon so that you end the line. And that is what that's going to look like for this part. Now that we have this, we can end it. So we're going to come down here and we'll just type end. And then we're going to end the module. And that is it for the actual uh, Verlog um, code for this. Now we need to save this as a file. So I'm going to do lab13.v. I'll click save here. Now we're going to open a new file. So control new. We're going to do Verlog HDL file again. And we need to make a test bench for this. So this is our test bench code. We're going to call it module. We need our test bench name. It's going to be lab13 underscore TV. And then we have parentheses, and then we end the line. Now, we are dealing with registers. So our inputs is what the registers are. So we're going to need to do register, so reg. And then we will do set our clock to zero. Clock is equal to zero. And then we're going to do a comma and have our data underscore input. And then we can end this line. And this is for input. Now, dealing with our outputs, uh, we have the wires. So we are going to have wire. We are going to have Q naught, and then, well, we're just going to have our Qs inside of here. So we have wire, and then we have Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and all the way till we hit Q7. And then I don't think I mentioned this, but I believe that the less than or equal to is that we want our Q1 to actually be less than or equal to the input, or I'm sorry, the output of this part right here. And we would do that for all of this down here. And that kind of makes sense at the beginning part where we have our data in has to be well, this reads greater than or equal to our Q0 when we write it out like that. So now going back to the test bench, we have our wires and now we need to have the header where we include everything when we do the UUT. So we're going to have our name lab 13 UUT. We have parentheses and then we have everything included inside of it. So we have the dot clock, we have parentheses clock. And then we have a comma dot data in, but here I have data underscore in. So just make sure everything is written properly. And then you would have a comma separating those. And then you would have dots and then the actual cues separating them here. We're going to need to begin this just as we've done over here. But here we're going to have our initial begin. And then inside of here, we are going to have our I'll just go on this line, data underscore in, and we're gonna set this equal to one. And then we're gonna run this for a time of 40. And then we should also have a semicolon separating the one and then the 40 time. And then we have a pound also with the 40. And then we're gonna do this again with data underscore in, but this is for zero. So we're gonna set this equal to zero. And then we're going to have the pound 40 again. So after this, we are going to have end because we want to end this. This is all we're going to have inside of here um, because either our data is going to be one or our data input is going to be zero. So we have our end here and now we need to deal with the clock. Well, the clock is always going to be running. So we have always, and then we will run this for a time of five. And then we're going to do that. Our clock is equal to the tilde, which is like this and then we have clock. And this is basically saying clock is equal to not clock. And then we are going to end the module after this. So we will do end module. And then no semicolon, we don't need to end the line there. So what we can do is come up to the compilation right here and we can click start compile. We're gonna want to save this. And then we're gonna want to save this as lab 13 underscore TB or whatever name you wanna save it as with the TB. And then we're gonna click save from here. Now, this is going to compile both the lab13.v and the lab13 underscore uh, tv.v. And so while it compiles, we will probably go get some water. And oh, I'm going to get some water. And then we'll come back when it hits 100%. Now that it's compiled, what we're going to do is go up to tools. We're going to do run simulation tool, click RTL simulation. And then a little feather should pop up at the bottom. And it has popped up. So we have the visual simulator right here. I'm going to full screen this. Um, if we don't have a waveform right here, we can just go to view and then we can click wave. 
and that will bring up the waveform. Now we're going to go to compile, click compile, and we need to go up to our directories, wherever we save this, wherever we saved our um, code and our test bench. We're going to compile both. Hopefully they have zero errors. And then after this, we are going to gently touch the simulate. And if we don't gently touch it, it's going to crash. And then we'll have to go back here and click tools, run simulation tool, and then RTL simulation again. And then we're going to have to do it all over. So we have to click compile and then we're going to do dot V and then dot TB and then, oh wait, yeah. And then click done. And then while it's waiting, I'll full screen it so you don't crash it. Click start simulation. We're going to click work or technically we're expanding work. And then we're going to click the test bench and then we'll click okay onto that. So we have these values in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to control or command and click all of them. And then I'm going to move them over here. Now from here, all I'm going to do is next to the 100 PS at the top, click run. And it's going to look like this. I'm going to right click and then click zoom full. And so we should have something like this. So when our clock is zero and our input is one, none of our outputs or none of the um, actual flip flops are going to be um, at high, so one. But when we have our clock and our input high, or the clock and the data in high, we have a one for the first part right here for Q0. So that's in the first stage. And then when we turn our clock off, so it's gonna clock, well, the clock first starts off and then it goes high and then it goes off and then it goes high. And then we can see when it's off, even at the first one, it's high for the Q0 is kept. And then when we do clock high, this Q1 is gonna be added to on. So let's look at it. So we can see that we now have an ST1 instead of just STX, right? So the clock's gonna go off again, and then we have a clock one, and that brings the next one, and then we can keep going through our clock cycles, and then we'll see that when we reach the end, we'll have all of them lit. And so that is how this lab would work. We have our waveform now, uh, we've done our code, and that is lab 13 completed.